Hi, it's Tanya with Red Kernel Crafts, and today I just want to show you some books that I've recently taken from the library. I've actually had some of these for weeks and I need to get them back because if anyone in our area is looking for books on urban sketching, I have all the books. So I'm just going to kind of do a flip through of them and just kind of talk to you a little bit about what they're like. I do have some favorites. Some of them are a little bit repetitive. I mean, I'm, I, they're all about urban sketching, or most of them are about urban sketching. This one's The Urban Sketcher, Techniques for Seeing and Drawing on a Location, and it's by Mark Taro Holmes. And there's an urban sketcher that I follow, Teo Ichi. He lives in Singapore, and he was just talking about this book, and I was like, oh my god, I have it like in my hand. I was actually sitting there reading it when I saw his video come up. I was like, okay, that's weird. This one here, he shows himself on location doing some sketches and stuff. The great thing about this book is that he talks about measurements and finding angles and, and things. This is really neat. He sketched this item and at the end he was able to take his drawing and match it up to the other half of the statue. <laughs> That's how good this guy is. But yeah, he talks about still life and he talks about techniques with shapes and shading and, and all that kind of stuff and just the different tools that he uses. So this one's really cool. I've read through a bit of it. I haven't, because I have so many, I think that was a little too overwhelming. I just kept putting them on hold on my phone and then the next day they'd say, okay, they're ready. I'm like, okay, just a second. <laughs> I'm not ready. So then I ended up with all these books. But yeah, it's just... Uh, you know, different tools that he uses, different techniques. This is a wash technique that he does. There's some people that put the wash down first and then they draw over top of that. Sometimes I will do that. I will do my paintings in watercolor first and then I go back and do the lines afterwards. And that way, if I make some kind of mistake with my watercolor, I can go back, add some more water and almost erase it a little bit. So that's this one here. So it's a nice, that's a nice one. I like that. And then this one is Urban Sketching, The Complete Guide to Techniques by Thomas Thorspecken. There you go there. So, oh, this one here is 142 pages. That, um, the Urban Sketcher one. This one here is, if you want to count the index, it's 126, 127. This is always fun when you do a little sketch of what's actually in your travel bag. This one here, I haven't really had a chance to look in depth in this one yet, but it's about tools and techniques, going urban and starting to sketch outside people and animals in your, in your paintings, and then choosing a subject. Like, are you doing street life, something in the park? Are you doing things about vacation or work? What have you? So there's some different drawings on here. This is really cool. A little shot from his desk area. Some different tools and pens and inks. This guy's really cool. Um, he goes by the name Le Pen. Um, there's a bigger picture of that in the book and I'll show you. This is what he takes on location. His little stool and his bag and his tools and things and he's actually scheduling time to sketch. He actually puts it in there which is probably a very smart idea. So this one talks about figure drawing, contour drawing, colors and things, changing your art a little bit digitally like you can scan it in afterwards and this talks about doing the actual urban sketching and going on location and places that you can go to do it. I think with any kind of drawing, you can start in your house. Like, just draw what's on your desk or draw what's in your kitchen. Go sit at the table and and just draw. I've been in bed before and just drew the bureau. Like, it's, you know, you can just draw whatever. And as for going outside the house, it's a really weird experience when you first go outside because it's like, oh my god, there's like people everywhere, uh, depending on where you are. And it can be a little strange, so I recommend just go in your front yard, go in your backyard. That's what I used to do when we were in Bermuda. I would just like sit out front and sketch the house or the chicken or <laughs> whatever was happening in the yard. Oh, this is that picture by Le Pen. So he actually draws in old accounting um, books, I believe it is. He gets them at flea markets. So you can see that it can be any type of paper. He has books, like a lot of books out on different 
places he's visited, and that's the type of book he uses. This maybe don't do while you're driving, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's fun. And if you're on um, a train or a plane, I usually sketch when we're flying somewhere. And the guy in Singapore that I watched, he said, just you know, if you're <laughs> sketching people, just kind of look past them because they might get a little freaked out if if they think you're actually drawing them. His, also, his other tip is to wear sunglasses <laughs> so you don't realize it. These ones here, there's uh, these are by Danny Gregory. And one is uh, an illustrated journey and one is an illustrated life. If I had to choose, I would pick the illustrated journey. I'll show you this one first. This is an illustrated life. <coughs> Excuse me. Drawing inspiration from the private sketchbooks of artists, illustrators, and designers. It has a list of all the different artists, which is really neat. And it gives a little clip of like their style, which is really cool. So if you wanna go back and find them, there's a little thumbnail to help you. The annoying thing was whoever took out this book before highlighted a lot of the book. So I started to sit down to read it and I just found that so distracting and quite annoying. <laughs> I love this. Uh, I try to do this in my sketches and do some journaling on them. It just, it's really cool. It just helps you when you look back at your drawings and stuff. It helps you remember where you were, what you were doing and the date and, and everything. So it's like a little journal, but with mostly drawings. So this one is like art. Um, if you know what I mean, it's like drawings, it's cartoons, it's different things that different artists have, have drawn and there's writing and stuff and maybe you like that and that's great. I like more of the actual on location urban sketching stuff more than just seeing people's art like that. I like more of the on location stuff. So it just shows all different techniques that people have. I mean, that one just showed like fruits and vegetables. You can just like set that up in your kitchen and just sit there and draw that. There's no pressure to actually go outside. Just sketch where you want, when you want. It's a good idea to keep a little sketchbook in your bag. I've recently put one back in mine. I just have the tiny little moleskines are about this big and they're just handy to have. This is, without counting the index, 263 pages, so it's quite thick. This one here is the Illustrated Journey. Again, this is by Danny Gregory. There he is there. And again, he did the same thing with the little thumbnail, which I think is a really neat idea. It's a neat way to do that. So yeah, this is more about on location sketching, which I really like. I love when people do this and they do a little map. When we went to Maui last year, I did that. I drew like a little map on the very front of my sketchbook because that was going to be, you know, where we were going. This is really cool. Look, Monday, August 14th. It's a rainy day in Lettington, the beach. So it's just a neat way to look back and remember. And you can see there's a bunch of different styles. Some you may like, some you might not. That's kind of cool. Some people are very detailed. Some people are very sketchy with their stuff. I love this. I love how the crab goes across to the other page. I love that there's a map. There's an artist that I follow. I've been following him. Let me see if I can bring him up. I've been following him on Instagram and he's been touring around. He's doing this crazy vacation. Here he is here. He's Jose mm, Narena. Uh, can you see that? He's in Thailand right now and this is his sketchbook. So every day he posts a picture, but that's like he's drawing that. <laughs> like he's drawing the money. It's insane. And he just like he does all little drawings on the side and stuff and keeps track of his trip. He actually, I believe he made this book before he left. And he has a piece of the actual money there. And he did this study on different eyes and stuff. Like he did this whole thing and then he writes. I mean, it's just, that's just incredible. So this person here is talking about their travel kit. That's another thing you can do is just use a brown sketchbook and they just use white and black. This is really cool. I love the bendiness of it. 
So it, your sketchbook does not have to be perfect. Mine certainly is not. It's actually a little boring if it is, which I try to tell myself because then when I want to have, you know, a perfect page in my sketchbook and it doesn't happen, then I'm like, oh, nope, done with that sketchbook. And then I go buy another one. This is really cool. I love this, the words going in with the drawings. That's really neat. That's really cool. Got all the detail in the clock. I think this is the one. Is this the one? I can't find it now. Different people. I've just started putting people in my sketches. It's me a little nervous to put people, but there's like not a lot of detail in those, but it's enough to show scale and size. Here's uh, Le Pen again. Uh, he's a French artist working for fashion advertising and editorial who lives between Barcelona and Paris. He published several of his sketchbooks as Le Pen, uh, Istanbul, and a bunch of other words I can't say. <laughs> but um, yeah, these are all his drawings with that lined paper. It's crazy. And he tips things. Like if he's running in a room, he just angles it. Like look at this one here. Drawing, 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 drawing. Woo! <laughs> but he gets the whole tower in. That's the really cool part. He's got everybody around a table here, which is very cool. I believe his books are in Spanish uh, or French. I'm not sure. Wait, if he's French, that's probably in French. Because he's done the book about Barcelona, so I think it, it must be in French. Um, he's from France. So, so you might not be able to read, but really... A lot of these books I haven't read. I've just been flipping through and looking at the artwork. And it's just inspiring. I just think it's really cool. Put words with your page. It's like when you do scrapbooking and you don't journal. Like, nobody will know the story behind the picture. This is really cool using the words. I love this. That's really cool. And then putting the the lettering around it. But this is all very simple. Like there's no, there's just literally squares and rectangles for windows. Love that. One around in a circle. That looks like just pen. That might just be pen. That's crazy. This one here, this is sketch. Oh, sorry. This one here was um, 267 pages. So again, I just like this one better because it's it's all about location. Location, location, location. That's the journey one. So just think journey, you're going on journey, you're going places. Traveling. Okay. Uh, Sketch City tips and inspiration for drawing on location. Ginkgo Press. Who wrote the book? No idea. Let's see an actual author. This one I haven't had a chance to look at that much. So you're kind of seeing it with me. Again, it talks about tools that you use. A lot of urban drawings full of tips saying the sketch was made with bold black strokes uh, of the pen it's important to look closely at as many details to put them in the correct proportion to each other this one says i used a drawing pen and black ink to compose the screen layout then applied the watercolor paint in several layers i let it dry a few points and then renewed the application of paint to achieve a greater depth so just kind of talking about uh, the different paintings that there are different artists in here and it talks about what their tools are, what they like to use, tools and material recommended by them, their city, the city in their eyes. That's really cool. Jeez, I actually thought that was a photograph. That's his sketch, and then he just paints the center of it. That's really cool. So each artist seems to have... Ooh, this guy has quite a few pages. And then all the different artists and their techniques. That's really cool. The Eiffel Tower. Fun, fun. That's actually really neat too. And you take, it's just all ink lines, but then thicker, thicker and thin lines. I love things that are kind of outlined like this. Like if I had to choose between this and this, I would pick this. That's just my style. Some people like things a little bit softer. Like my sister, she likes this, I believe she still likes it, um, the style of Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is very soft. I like things more like the Flintstones, which are very harsh with the black lines. Blue's Clues, loved watching that with my kids because everything was outlined in black. 
That's a drawing. That's crazy. Okay, that person didn't eat or sleep that day. <laughs> That's crazy. That's neat. That's a drawing. That's unbelievable. So very cool. Very cool. So that's the Sketch City. And then this one here is Urban Sketching by Gabrielle uh, Campanero. And he's also done, he's done this one and this one, which are, is, let me use my words, um, which is very cool. This one here is by Stephanie Bauer. And then um, these are uh, Gabriel. He's actually from, I forget where he's from. But he started urban sketching here in Seattle, which is very cool. This is the art of urban sketching. This is by him, drawing on location around the world. And this is neat. He did a whole map of everywhere that he had gone. He's got all cities kind of highlighted. So it's very cool. And then he's got it uh, done by sections. It's skyline, cityscapes, panoramas, then building and architecture, industry and construction sites, harbors and waterfronts. So he's got it narrowed down, but it's also in the city. This is really cool. That's Le Pen again. And he's got his work on graph paper, which is really cool. So it just kind of brings some interest to it. And actually, if you're using graph paper or any kind of lined paper, it'll help you get some things straight if you're looking to do that. So all different tools that you can use. There's another one of Le Pen. Le Pen. This is neat. I like that, how it goes outside of the little box there. This one here is really cool. So there's uh, Victoria. Um, Victoria's Chinatown. This is up in, in Canada. And San Francisco. Like it's all little sketches from around the world. Whoops. Sorry. I'm going too fast. So there's LA, a little sketch of Disneyland there, San Diego, and it's the artists that are in that city, which is really cool. I'm just take half of the book. All right, Montreal, New York. There's Montreal. Very cool. A lot of cathedrals and churches in Montreal. New York City. Norfolk, Orlando, and the Dolphin Encounter at SeaWorld. We did that. I have actually stood right there, and I've stood on the angle there, too. It's Buenos Aires, Johannesburg. So it's kind of neat. It's just samples. Here's my buddy Le Pen again. <laughs> I like that guy's style. It's just really cool. Barcelona. So just a really neat book. It just gives you a little bit of things from around the world. And you know what? I may never get to London. I may never get to Glasgow, Scotland, or anything like that. Just look up a picture on the internet. And that's really cool. The building's not finished on that side. It's like under construction. Just look up a picture. Pretend you're there and, and sketch that. And then maybe someday it'll come true. You can actually go there drawing inspiration back here. Like it could be anything. Just sit down and sketch a lamppost. Like this. And, but look how different the, the lampposts are. That's really cool. All right. So this one has 317 pages. That's that one there. So it's the art of urban sketching. And then these ones I really enjoyed. First off, I like that they look like a moleskin. I think that's really cool. Also, I wanted to read these books because it's Seattle and not all the drawings are from Seattle, but uh, which one was it? This one. This is supposed to be over like that, but it was broken when I got it, unfortunately. This is really cool. This is a little, it's called Blaine Staircase, Stairway. Uh, April 14th, 2011, and then it says Lake Union, and then it has the mansion there. So there's some stuff. Is this the one with you, Dub? Might not be. This this is really cool, just with the excavator on the street, and he's got the road here, Fairview Avenue North and Republican Street. So it's just really neat to kind of have the address and stuff of where you were actually sketching. And this was showing where um, you kind of 
set up your, your drawing, the composition of your drawing. This was really cool. And he was also saying that get a different angle. Like when you stop to look at something, this is Red Square at, um, at UW, at the university. But, um, and he's got the cranes in the background, like he's got the car in there, but I love that he just left that white and the background white. You don't need to have too many details. This one was all about perspective, one point perspective, two point perspective, and it really made um, a lot of sense to me. So it's just a really neat book with different um, techniques, different habits and stuff that you can do using pencil, using ink, using watercolor, stuff like that. But just really good books, not overwhelming like some of these ones, but you still get all the information. The next one I read of these was The People in Motion. This one was about um, people and putting people in your sketches. It talks a little bit about shape and size, motion, gestures but the great thing about it is that it can just be a little stick figure but what it does is it just brings scale and size to your drawings which kind of helps like when you see a large area like this and you take the people away it's a little hard to imagine well how how big is that statue like could i stand next to it i mean i know that sounds silly but it just helps when you put people in in your scene Okay, the camera shut off there for a second, and I'm really starting to panic that none of what I've just been saying recorded. Oh my god. This one's talking about using a pencil for size. Like, you'll see an artist hold up their thumb, or they'll hold up their pencil or whatever. They're actually measuring. They're doing something that makes sense of what they're doing. But yeah, this just talked about lines. I love this. All that little detail in there. It can be scribbly. It can be completely perfect and neat. The idea is that it's your drawing and you can have it look however you want. I think I'm going to keep reading through this one. There's a couple of the books that I still want to read through. So this one's definitely one of them because I was learning a lot about that. So if I had to pick books, I would definitely do these three. I would do this one just because I think that's fun and interesting. This one was neat too with around the city and stuff, but you kind of get that from this illustrated journey. And what was the other one? This one seemed kind of neat. I was starting to read through that and he does give a lot of techniques and stuff, but hands down, if I had to pick, this one's kind of cool too. They're all really good, but if I had to pick one with a whole bunch of different artists and a whole lot of like urban sketching ideas and styles. I think I would do this one, An Illustrated Journey. It's kind of tied with this one, but I think I like this one better. This was the art of urban sketching. And I would definitely do these. If I could only pick one, I would pick Understanding Perspective, because if you have your perspective off, your drawing is going to look really confusing. And it's just a good thing to learn. And you can do like so much with a drawing. You can have it angled this way. You can have it angled that way. You can have, there's another sample. Like this one here, it was a whole bunch of fountains and they eventually got smaller. So if you understand how to do that, you can just have more depth and interest to your, your drawings. This is really cool. The Lake Union that's here in Seattle. Little Lake Union thing. This one here with the trees, the farther away the trees get, the smaller. People in Motion was good too, but if you're not interested in putting people in, then you're not going to want to bother with that. It is a good idea how to do People in Motion though. This one here, that's really cool. I love that, how he like did a box around it, but it's kind of inside and then it's a little bit faded on the outside of the drawing. This one was, was kind of cool too. Is this the one with the excavator? Yeah. I don't know, just some really neat drawings in that, but I would definitely do this one. So picking one, I would do this. Picking two, I would do that. Picking three, architectures and cityscapes, I think. And then picking four books, I'd say this one next. Well, this one's kind of good too. I don't know. This one I would say would be tied with the illustrated journey. Okay. So I'm sure I've confused you enough, <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to share these with you and yeah, just check out your library. It's a good way. Cause I was like, I had these in my cart. 
on Amazon when I had the Illustrated Life and the Illustrated Journey because I was like, oh my god, I must have those. And this one I don't like as much, so I was kind of very glad that I didn't go and spend $30 or however much they are. But yeah, just get them from the library, check them out, and just get inspired to do some drawing. All right, I hope you like this video. I'll be back with some more videos about drawing and things um, soon. All right, take care, guys.